Hello and welcome to the Old Golden Black for this Premier League predictions video. A video I've been looking forward to making since Wolves got promoted back in April. But I'm going to try and not focus too much on each individual position. I think that's really difficult to do. So I'm going to do the top six, the bottom three, a dark horse for the season and then a flop of the season. And for Wolves fans watching this video, I'm going to do a bit more of a detailed look at Wolves in a separate video. So in 20th place, I've gone for Huddersfield Town. I think they did so well last season to stay up and Wagner surprised me. I didn't think he would be tactically good enough to keep Huddersfield in the Premier League. But with the way the team pulled together towards the end of the season and picking up those vital results against Manchester City and against Chelsea at the very end of the season to secure their survival really showed the team spirit that they've got there. But I don't think it's going to be enough for them this season. I can see them getting relegated. In 19th place, I've gone for Cardiff City. Having watched them a couple of times last season and knowing Neil Warnock, he hasn't got the flexibility to succeed in the Premier League and I can see him being relegated yet again from the Premier League. I think they've got quite a one-dimensional approach to playing football, very, very reliant on playing the long ball and I think that's going to be found out quite quickly in the Premier League so unless they can adapt to that I can see Cardiff being relegated. In 18th place I've gone for Bournemouth, last year I predicted them to go down as well, I think they've been punching well above their weight for a number of years now and to still be in the Premier League is a massive massive achievement for them but I just think that the lack of support there and the tininess of the club and they haven't improved their squad as much as they did last summer so far though there is still a week to go in the transfer window I just don't think that they've got enough to stay in the Premier League this time. So now quickly on to the top six. In sixth place I've gone for Chelsea. I think they're going to struggle to qualify for the Champions League again. I think they've had such an upheaval this summer with uh, Conte leaving and Sari coming in. Now, last season, I predicted Chelsea to miss out on the top four because of missing John Terry and that influence in the dressing room. And I think that's going to still be the case, particularly if Courtois and Hazard leave as well. Willian looks like he could be on the way out and it could be that Chelsea actually miss out on the top six altogether. And in fifth place, I've gone for Manchester United. And similar to Chelsea, they have seem to be... A bit of disharmony behind the scenes there. Mourinho is really not happy about the transfer dealings that he's done. They've signed a couple of players. There doesn't seem to be any sort of plan at Manchester United, and that's been the case since Mourinho's been there. They've signed a lot of names, but they haven't really got a system that they are happy with playing and they know that the players they want to bring in. I personally just think that Mourinho is such a negative manager, and particularly at the end of last season, it just wasn't very entertaining to watch at all. In fourth place, I've gone for Arsenal. Now, under Arsene Wenger last season, they had one of their worst seasons in a long time, and they particularly struggled away from home in their second half of the season. But I do think that under Emery, I think they'll have a little bit of a resurgence. Not enough to win the league or challenge for the title, but I think they'll get back on track and get in the Champions League. But that being said, they haven't really strengthened too much in the in the transfer window, which perhaps suggests that Emery thinks that the squad is good enough to, to push for that top four place and it just needs a bit of better coaching and a fresh voice that Arsenal's needed for a long, long time. In third place, and this might be a little bit controversial, but I think Manchester City are going to finish third this season and not in the top two, uh, purely because I think their main ambition for this season is to win the Champions League and they're going to put all their eggs in that basket. They have got a big enough squad to be able to compete across all the trophies and we did see last season them pushing for all four trophies for most of the season. It was only really about March that it all started falling apart there. I do think that Manchester City's main priority this season is the Champions League. That will come at a cost and that cost will be finishing third in the Premier League. Now the top two, I think... I think I'm completely wrong here. I think in second place, it's going to be Liverpool. They've shown over the last couple of years that they've got a very, very good attacking unit. And they've they've added to that now with a strong defence with Virgil van Dijk and adding Alisson Becker. Although I don't think he's an amazing goalkeeper, he's certainly better than Karius. And I think that will gain them about 10 points or so. But I can't quite see them pushing for the title at the moment. They're just not quite there yet. And in first place, I'm going for Tottenham Hotspur. Although they haven't signed anybody, and that's been a big question mark that's been raised over their transfer policy this summer, I don't think they've needed to buy anybody. I think they needed a consistent summer. The spine of their team is excellent, and I would argue that it's probably the best in the Premier League in the two centre-backs, the midfield in Christian Eriksen, and then Harry Kane up front. And the players that they've got around that are superb as well. And I would suggest that they only really need to add a couple of players to to win the title. The only thing that I think is going to pull them back is the 
transition between Wembley and the new stadium, which is going to happen in around about September. If they can manage that well, then I can't see any reason why Tottenham couldn't go on and win the league. Now, for my flop of the season, it's quite a difficult one to predict this season. And if you don't, if you don't consider Chelsea and Man United finishing fifth and sixth as flops, Everton are going to have another difficult season. I think Marco Silva is a very overrated manager. Since he left Olympiacos, he's really struggled, particularly in England. Hull, well, got them relegated. Watford got his head turned by Everton and wasn't doing great there either. Everton, he, he signed Ricarlison for £50 million, which, if you consider that Moutinho came to Wolves for very little, not that great a signing. And I did hear that in a press conference the other day, he was asked about his philosophy and he sort of shrugged his shoulders and said... Don't know. To me, that spells out a manager who has not got his players on the same page. If you look at their results in pre-season as well, they won 22 nil against a lot of Austrian plumbers, but since then have not done anything particularly good. Now, Wolves will face Everton in the first game of the season, so I'll be very interested to see what happens in that match. But I think it's a good fixture for Wolves to start off their season against an Everton team who are in transition yet again. Now for my dark horses of the season. I think looking at the table, it's pretty much from... The top six downwards, anybody could get relegated like we saw last year and anybody could rise to the bo to the top of that pack as well. But I'm predicting that Newcastle United are going to have a strange season. I think they're going to finish seventh. I think they're going to win the bottom half of the Premier League purely because there's such doubt around the club at the moment. And it could go either way. They could finish bottom of the league. With Benitez at the helm, he did such a good job last season. He found out very quickly how to be successful in the Premier League and managed to get them enough points to finish in a very, very satisfying position. And I can see them doing that again. I think they have they do need to strengthen the squad, but they've still got another week or so to do it. But with the sale of Mitrovic bringing in a little bit more money, there's still a few question marks about the ownership there with Mike Ashley not pumping in as much money as perhaps he should do or in comparison to other clubs of a similar size. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see Newcastle this season. Let me know your thoughts on my predictions down below. Let me know your predictions down below. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you in a couple of days' time for a more focus on a Wolves perspective. Yeah. See you. Bye-bye.